I'm Martin Reddish. I'm the Ansel Professor of Law and Public Policy at Northwestern University School of Law. Today I'm talking about a paper that I was the head researcher on that I prepared for the Searle Center at Northwestern University School of Law about the sea prey doctrine and class actions. Sea uh, prey is a particular unique kind of relief that has grown in the last 25 years significantly uh, in the settlement and awards of modern class actions and we feared that it has caused significant problems for the operation of the law and the operation of the Constitution as a limit on modern class actions and our research which was both legal and normative and empirical basically confirmed our fears. One of the biggest problems with the modern class action is that when there are hundreds of thousands or even millions of supposed victims and their injuries are relatively small, it's going to be as a practical matter near impossible to find these, these individual claimants, and even if you can find them, to get them to go to the trouble of actually filing a claim to recover the money. To keep these suits going, plaintiffs, lawyers, courts, and sometimes defense attorneys involved in, in settlements have latched onto this Cy Prey idea, the idea of a second best relief. And the way they have translated the old law of trusts see prey into the modern version of see prey is to find some charity that has some loose connection to the particular litigation and award a certain amount of a settlement fund or a compensatory fund to that charity. Where CPRE is employed, the money is paid out to the charitable institution, but the defendant is made to pay. In the case of a settlement, the defendant is, is able to get the whole situation resolved. The plaintiff's attorneys are going to be compensated, either directly or indirectly, on the basis of the amount recovered by the class if some of that money is given through C prey rather than to the individual claimants, that's perfectly okay with them. The judge gets the case off of his or her docket, so everybody seems happy except the absent claimants and except the Constitution. There are two very important ways in which uh, the growth and use of C prey threatens basic constitutional values. The first is Article 3 of the Constitution, the article dealing with the judiciary. Article 3 limits the authority of the judiciary to the adjudication of cases and controversies, live disputes where there is a victim and a, a perpetrator who has violated the victim's rights and the purpose of the litigation is to vindicate the rights of the injured party. What C. Prey does is take this traditional bilateral process uh, perpetrator of harm and victim and add a third party. It's, it's what I refer to as a trilateralization of the process. It introduces into the picture this charity which of course may well be very worthwhile. The problem is it has never been injured in this case. It has no involvement in the case. There is a violation of the basic notion of case or controversy because the party being compensated has no injury in fact. The relief being given to them is not remedial as the Supreme Court has said is required. Moreover, by doing this, C. Prey violates another constitutional principle, the principle of separation of powers. The underlying substantive law, recall, is not made through the class action device. It is made through the legislative process or through the creation of substantively controlling, transparent, common law. The law being enforced in every one of these class actions has no provision for the, the payment of money to any charity, regardless of how worthy it is. It is 
for the vindication of the rights of victims. And that is the sole purpose that the legislation or the controlling substantive law has been created for. And the final consideration is the Rules Enabling Act, enacted originally in 1934, modified in 1988. It is the statute by which Congress authorized the Supreme Court to create the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, of which the Class Action Rule, Rule 23, is one. Congress expressly stated in 1934 and reaffirmed in 1988 that the rules cannot abridge enlarge or modify a substantive right. By use of one of these rules, the class action rule to impose see prey relief, they, the, the courts under the guise of the procedural rule are not only abridging a substantive right, they're transforming its very nature. So the see prey doctrine presents a serious threat to constitutional values from, from due process, to the case or controversy requirement of Article 3, or to the foundational notion of separation of powers. Given the serious constitutional and normative problems that we've discerned in the use of sea prey in class actions, what is of particular concern are our empirical findings about the uh, significant increase in the use of sea prey. The other ominous consideration we found in our empirical research is the noticeable increase in the use of CPRE awards in what we refer to as pathological class actions, class actions where the, the serious constitutional problems are presented. For example, what we call faux class actions, which are class actions in basically name only, where the claims of the individual claimants are so small that, as a practical matter, it's inconceivable that they could ever be compensated and that they're mostly for show. There's been a dramatic increase, over 30% now of CPRE awards occur in class actions where the average individual claim is under $100. What is so surprising given the serious problems of CPRE awards, is that the courts have been shockingly accepting of the practice and that scholarship has rarely, if ever, criticized the doctrine. So the first thing we would want would be for people to recognize that this is a problem. Uh, ultimately, we believe that the whole concept of CPRE must be held unconstitutional. As, as violative of due process, uh, Article III case or controversy, and separation of powers. If the result is that class, a class action cannot be certified in those circumstances, that simply is the result. If co compensatory remedies do not work out to be an effective policing device, then it is not up to the courts under the guise of a procedural device to create the substitute. It is, in a democratic society, it is up to the elected branches of government to make those choices.